Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And as always, thanks for watching. We're going inside the Weld app. And again, if you don't know about the Weld app, you should really go check it out. I'm answering questions as often as I can. We've got a question from Aaron Ognita. He said, I need some help, guys. Can you send me a weaving pattern for pipe schedule 60, 70, 18? I've got some schedule 80 right here, and I'm gonna show you my technique on how to set yourself up for success on weaving a big old 70, 18 cap on a piece of pipe. Just to get you an idea of what you need to be looking like before you even start capping a piece of pipe, at least this schedule 80 piece of six inch here, is just working your way out towards the cap. There's gonna be, each layer is gonna be kind of different. You've gotta plan each layer and how much you're actually gonna be filling, because if you get out to the pass before the cap, it's a little too low in some spots or too high in other spots, then you're gonna have an uneven cap. You wanna make sure that the pass before is always even. So if we have our hot pass here, as we see, it's not a lot of room to weave. If you know, you know you're gonna be weaved or putting single pass welds on here. If there's no room to weave, don't try to weave. You're just gonna be scarring up your bevels and getting undercut or trapping some boo-boo. So make sure that you keep it nice and tight, keep it inside those bevels and don't let it go anywhere. We're really not only doing a little drag with this 332 7018, and that's that, keeping it right in the center. That's all you gotta worry about. Now, when we start getting out to the next fill, we can see how much it actually fills up with the next bead. So we gotta kind of compensate for that and understand that. And if we start getting to some of these high spots, that's fine to leave them there until we start ready to cap. We need to knock those down and get them smaller. The trick to this is staying inside these bevel edges still. We do not need to get that rod going outside those bevel edges. Otherwise, you're gonna be widening your bevels and this is not the point to do it. You're only allowed, even after the cap, to be outside these bevel edges about a 16th of an inch on either side. You're not supposed to make this big, wide, nasty thing way outside the bevels. Keep everything inside the bevels until you're ready to cap. And we move on to the cap pass. And it's nice, it's really the same motion as we did for the previous pass. We wanted to make sure that the previous pass was nice and flat. So if we had any high spots, we knocked them down. If we had any low spots, we filled them in. And then we're keeping that Z weave pattern, pausing on those sides, but we're staying, that rod is still staying inside the bevel. It's never going outside the bevel. If we let that rod go outside, we're widening it too much. We get to the inside of that bevel edge and wait a second and let it fill in. But never cross over that line. If you start messing up your bevel edges before you're even ready to cap, you're not ready to cap. You, you've got other problems. You got way bigger issues. But now we want to make sure our machine settings are right. And this Typhoon 230 is a stick welding maniac. And it's not even its main features. Main features has got a lot of stuff to do with TIG. But today we're going to focus on stick and setting this thing up to make those welds good to go. Now, while we're not doing anything fancy, we're just capping with a 7018, putting a nice Z pattern on there and just weaving it a bit. This machine's pretty fancy. The Typhoon 230 has so many bells and whistles just for this stick machine. I really love the display, how big it is, and the fact that I can actually see everything. It doesn't take me away from this one screen, and you can kind of just adjust everything. You don't have to go back and forth. That was something that I really liked that they changed. We have all your basic stick features and some extras as far as the arc force, the hot start, the hot start time and the percentage, as well as adjusting your amps. Now, what is cool, you can now hook up the remote to your stick welding. So if you wanted to use your foot pedal, you can actually run your foot pedal if you want. Still has the VRD safety feature and anti-stick. And I was like, what the heck is anti-stick? Does it not let you stick? I thought that's what a hot start is. It's so that it actually senses whenever that rod is stuck to a crater, or maybe you stick the rod, it makes it a lot easier for that rod to be removed afterwards it keeps it from sticking so hard inside that puddle so that's a really cool feature i'm keeping it on and actually it has the capability of 718 electrodes 308 309 316 we can go the other way 6013 we can hear that click inside the machine because it knows for 6011 and 6010 we need a little extra beans and this thing knows how to weld the 6010 man it just just super smooth and so much control over all the features here not to mention that it could also run ac and adjust the balance of frequency. What? For our settings today, we're gonna run 95 amps, hot start about 68, hot start time about a half a second, arc force 40%. I like, uh, you know, a softer arc at, using a 7018, especially when capping. Don't have a remote, VRD's off, anti-stick is on, and we're gonna switch that old dog from 6010 back to 7018. Boom, let's roll. So the machine is set up and that's great. Now we want to talk technique. We've got the cap up here. 
we can see that there's a little bit of reinforcement compared to what it looks like down here where there is nothing sticking up past flush. We wanna make sure we maintain these bevel edges. But as far as technique goes, I am only doing this Z weave as a pattern, just side to side, pausing on each side, making sure that it fills in. Now, the more that you go up in your Z pattern, the longer that you gotta pause. So it's really important that we keep this Z pattern nice and tight, tight to itself, that way everything fills in. We also wanna make sure that we're not going outside these bevel edges. These need to be remained untouched. So that means when we come across with this rod, we stay well inside of that so as that the puddle fills out, it doesn't hit that bevel edge. We stay inside this, doing this Z weave pattern all the way up, but staying close. Every time you hit one side, you've gone across the middle twice. So the middle is gonna take care of itself it's more important that you stay close to the pipe and fill in these edges, but without, without getting to this bevel edge. Setting yourself up right here for your pre-cap is important for your cap, but we're gonna be doing the exact same pattern on the cap, just a couple extra details. We are doing no difference on the cap here. We are going side to side in this Z-weave pattern, making sure we're pausing on those sides we're not taking too big a steps forward. You can go forward more in your pattern. You just don't wanna to go too wide. You, you're, you're stuck to the tolerances of these bevels. These bevels are only about a half an inch wide. Now we were about that 16th outside that half an inch. So that means we're at that nine sixteenths from side to side outside. That's as far, that's as much as we get. So we can't go and aim for these bevel edges. We gotta keep that rod still inside those bevel edges, we might just pause a little longer to let things fill up. But you don't see that Z pattern in my weld. I mean, if you look closely, you can see how those ripples stack in there. But we're keeping that puddle, we're staying in our puddle no matter what, staying inside the bevels and inside our puddle all the way up. Well, I hope that answered your question, Aaron, about capping techniques as far as a 7018 on pipe is concerned. I keep it pretty easy and cheesy with the Z Weavy. That's all I need, that's all I ever do. You can do whatever pattern you want. As long as you keep things inside the bevel and you prep yourself on your way out to make sure you've got enough room for your cap. As far as mine's concerned, there's still some spots that I might would consider a little high. The tie-ins, you know, they could be better. But that's what it looks like. I think it's pretty decent and I'm super impressed with this Typhoon 230, guys. We've only just started with this machine, played around with the stick, super smooth with the 6010s, open roots. 7018s. I've played with it a little bit. I haven't even tried the AC stick with it. There's so many more features that this thing can do so much more than you'll ever need. And I'm excited to test it and put it to its limits. So stay tuned. Ask us some more questions inside the app, guys. We're in there answering them every single day. And if I don't get to it, someone else definitely will. Stay tuned for more of this 230 man. It's off the chain.